modern bicycle went through some major changes before it became the smooth ride we know and love today. In fact, its development was quite bumpy. So grab your helmet and let's go back to Europe in the early 1800s. For thousands of years, Europe's main mode of transportation was the horse. And in 1816, that started to become a serious problem. Napoleon had just finished waging war on most of Europe, killing millions of people and hundreds of thousands of horses. Like that wasn't bad enough, 1816 became the year with no summer, a climate shift that caused crop harvests everywhere to fail. Add a colossal volcanic eruption in Indonesia that killed thousands more horses headed for Europe, and what do you get? A major horse shortage. Horses were in high demand, yet many of them had either been killed in battle, froze or starved in the year with no summer, or straight up died in a volcano. Yikes! Enter German forest official and amateur inventor Karl Dreis. He wanted to invent horseless travel and create a human-powered vehicle. So he drew up the plans for a Lauf machine or a running machine. The Lauf machine, also known as the dandy horse, was basically everything a bicycle has today, except no pedals. The rider would balance on a wood plank and make the two wheels move by running. It was kind of a workout. So around the 1850s, cycle enthusiasts added three and four wheels to the configuration and called them tricycles and quadricycles. The quadricycle could fit up to three people, but was very heavy to push. The safe and stable tricycle brought the invention of a chain system, but they were very slow. Next up in the evolution of the bicycle was the Velocipede. Invented by the French Michaud company in the late 1800s, the model was all metal and featured pedals attached to the front wheel and a brake. Imagine riding a huge bicycle with your legs extended to the front wheel and you get the gist. It's important to remember that at the time, roads weren't great for riding. They were curvy, made of cobblestone, and had all kinds of lumps, bumps, and potholes to pedal around. Enter the penny farthing. It had big rubber wheels inflated with air for total shock absorption from the street. Female riders loved that their long skirts never touched the dirty ground. They might look crazy with their big front wheel, but apparently they were quite safe and fun to ride. But that was the issue with the penny farthing. It was fun. Too fun. Serious cycle enthusiasts viewed these high wheel bicycles as impractical, silly, and a gimmicky toy for the rich to play with. Not a respectable mode of travel. Enter the safety bicycle. It had two equal sized wheels, a braking system, puffier tires that could handle the street, a comfier seat, and a more compact design. The safety bicycle was a hit and biking took off in popularity in the 1880s. In 1896, the US Army conducted an experiment to see if bikes could replace horses. They put together an all African-American infantry unit called Buffalo Soldiers and challenged them to ride 1,900 miles from Montana to Missouri by bicycle. These men put the bike to the test, journeying across the Rocky Mountains and through extreme weather, often with no road to ride on. The 41-day journey was a testament to the Buffalo Soldier's bravery and the awesomeness of the bicycle. Shortly after, in 1899, African-American inventor Isaac Johnson patented the modern diamond frame and the folding bicycle. This patent is still in use today, and bicycles keep getting better. In the 20th century, the world saw the invention of the road bike and the BMX bike. In the last few years, the e-bike, or electric bike, has become incredibly popular as a means of everyday transportation. So there you have it. Bicycles are real good. With new improvements every few years, we've kicked cycling into high gear. Sorry for all these bicycle puns. I'm just a little tired.